Okay, we need to talk for a few minutes about lasers. All right, um, and they're intricately connected with our understanding of the atom. Because you need to think about um, when an atom is in an excited state, so if this is n equals 1, n equals 2, n equals 3, and it, okay, so if an atom is in an excited state somewhere up here maybe, um, after it gets excited, it then, after a short period of time, it'll fall back down, okay? So obviously I'm doing hydrogen if I'm having it fall back down to the n equals 1 level from the n equals 3, okay? Could be hydrogen, I guess it could be helium. Um, but, um, and when it falls back down, it gives off, of course, as we know, um, a photon of energy. And this would be true if it was any other atom and it was at some higher state, right? It could be up here and falling down to the n equals 3. Okay, so it could be going from 5 to 3 and giving off a photon of energy. So in 1917, Einstein imagined what would happen if you had an electron in its excited state, so let's say like the n equals 5, and what would happen if this electron got struck with a photon that had the exact same energy as the original photon that it had absorbed. And what he concluded and what he was able to show was what would happen would be this little guy would fall back down to where it had been and in the process it would give off of course the photon of energy that it had absorbed. And the one that hit it will not be affected at all. So in the end, so you so you excite a, uh, an electron to a higher state and then you hit that electron with a photon identical to the one that it absorbed. And when you do that, then two photons of energy get emitted. The one that hit it, that remains unaffected, and the one that it gives off as it falls back down. These two photons will have exactly the same frequency and they will be in sync, in step with each other, okay? So they'll be in phase with each other. This is called stimulated emission. And what that means is that you're stimulating or you're causing the electron, the atom, to emit a photon before it necessarily would have, okay? The two, these two photons then will leave the atom and they'll go and strike two more atoms that have been excited with the same amount, uh, with the same photon. And so now four will be admitted. And those four will strike four more atoms and then it'll become eight and then 16 and then 32. And before you can blink, what you get is an avalanche of photons that are all the same frequency, all in phase with each other. Same frequency, same wavelength, and in phase or in step with each other. So if you think of them as waves, then all the crests would be lining up and, and adding together to give you a nice big crest. Okay, now Einstein realized for this to happen, you needed two conditions. You needed to be able to get the atoms originally into an excited state, and then you needed to somehow corral these photons that were being given off so that they would uh, continue to strike other atoms uh, that were excited so that somehow you could get this cycle going that like these two will hit two more and then those four will hit four more. Okay, so Einstein came up with the theory of uh, how this could work. Uh, 1917. 1959 to 1960. A person named Theodore, a scientist, a physicist, named Theodore Maiman is the one that gets credit for a device meeting those two conditions that Einstein said were necessary. So one was that the atom was in the excited state, and the other was that you could somehow collect and contain the photons being emitted so they could continue to strike, strike more excited atoms. So Theodore Maiman was able to create a device meeting both of these requirements, and he called it a laser. Now, a laser is really, um, it stands for something, right? It's an acronym. Is that the right word? I think so. It stands for, do you know it? Light Amplification 
by, there's no B, stimulate it. Remember Einstein called it stimulated emission, so the SE is the stimulated emission. And what is it that's causing this stimulated emission? Radiation. Okay, so light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Light amplification, right? You, they're being emitted, photons are being emitted in phase, so you get a really big uh, added together wave. How is it happening? By stimulated emission of radiation. So you're you're stimulating the atoms to emit the electrons. So laser, light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Okay, and an atom that is uh, emits light when stimulated, they, this that atom is said to laze. So laze is to give off light in this way. Okay, and usually one, so you have to get the atoms in an excited state to start with. And usually we do this by running electrical current through them. Okay, one of the most common lasers is a helium neon laser. So the helium atoms are excited. They uh, collide with the neon atoms um, that pump them up into an excited state and then cause them to laze. Okay, I'm sure you've heard of a helium neon laser. It's the red one. Now, in 1959-1960, when Theodore Maiman did this, they, they said, and it's the best line in the world, they said that a laser was a problem, was a solution looking for a problem. Okay, they were like, wow, this is really cool. It could be used to solve, to do lots of things, like what? So it was a solution looking for a problem. And we have since found problems for it to be a solution for. But before we get to, before we get to that, uh, it's important to know that laser light has sp very specific characteristics which make it very useful. One is that it is directional. And what that means is the beam doesn't spread out. You know if you have a flashlight beam and you shine it on the back wall, when it gets to the back wall, it's a big spot of light. And the further away the back wall is, the bigger the spot of light is. But that's not true for a laser beam. It starts out as a tiny beam and it stays as a tiny beam as it travels so that when it hits the back, it's still that pinpoint. It doesn't spread out, so it's directional. The second one is it's monochromatic one color, one wavelength, okay? Um, because remember, all of the photons that come off are in sync with each other, okay? It's intense, so they collect all these photons and then emit them together. So remember, intensity is the number of photons, and we said that this was an avalanche of photons. And then the fourth characteristic is that it is coherent, and coherent means in step or in phase with each other. So no destructive interference, okay, all constructive, all crests on crests, all troughs on troughs, okay? Now, um, unfortunately, lasers are really inefficient. When they were first made, it might be a little better, but not too much. Um, they were about 1% efficient. Okay, 1% of the energy being used is converted into the light of the laser. So they're really inefficient. We're working on it, but they're still not great. What do we use them for when we said they were a problem looking for a place to happen? If you were to Google, you would find out surveyors use them to make sure that lines are straight. Like when you're building a tunnel from one end to another, you use a laser to mark the two spots. They're used in fiber optics for all of our telecommunication stuff. We use them in uh, spectrometry when we're uh, trying to excite a single atom. We use them to make holograms, three-dimensional um, images. We use them all the time in medicine. We already talked about laser eye surgery. We use them as uh, cutting tools instead of uh, knives in medicine. Uh, they're used in in industry as cutting tools as well, like to cut steel. They're used in nuclear fusion. We hope uh, we're trying to use them in nuclear fusion. Uh, we use them in radiation. When, uh, that's back to medicine. Uh, we use them in electric.